Welcome to the Binning Report. Coming up in this edition, the Medal of Honor for a local resident. And a look into Sniper School. Later, kayaking the hooch. Welcome to the Benning Report. I'm David Reich. And I'm Melissa Bell with the Fort Benning Public Affairs Office. Thanks for watching. Opelika resident and retired Command Sergeant Major Benny Adkins has been selected to receive America's highest military honor. We had a chance to speak with Sergeant Major Adkins about receiving the Medal of Honor. The Medal of Honor is the highest honor that Congress can bestow upon a member of the armed services. Recently selected to receive this award was Opelika resident, retired Command Sergeant Major Benny Adkins, who spoke at a press conference at the National Infantry Museum. It's going to be a humbling experience and uh, I want want it known that uh, I feel like the Medal of Honor is, uh, belongs to those other 16 Americans who were there and especially the five that paid their ultimate price. Sir. Sergeant Major Adkins receives the Medal of Honor for his acts of valor during his second deployment to Vietnam in March of 1966, when his camp was overrun by the North Vietnamese. It would take a 38-hour harrowing battle, 48 hours of escape and evade, and the lives of five American soldiers before a successful rescue could be made. They were found uh, by helicopter and uh, notified uh, by radio that they were going to come in and pick us up. Well, the helicopter come right in and they shot the helicopter down. So it was too late and uh, too high of altitude for another helicopter, so we had to evade again. At the National Infantry Museum, Sergeant Major Adkins was able to tour the Cold War exhibit. And outside at the Vietnam Memorial, find the names of five fellow soldiers lost to the battle in Camp Shaw. In front of their names, five red roses to signify the five fallen heroes. Heroes that Sergeant Major Adkins will never forget. I can tell you every man that was there and uh, and unfortunately the five that lost their life, I can tell you how that uh, that happened. So no, it, uh, uh, it diminishes but it does not go away. As Sergeant Major Adkins prepares for his visit to Washington, he remains lighthearted and in good spirits. Looking forward to his trip and even teasing about his last visit to the White House. I'm one of the only pip persons I know here that spilled a dessert in the White House. Sir. But they'll let you back in. Anyway. I'm not sure. <laughs> Before leaving the museum, Sergeant Major Adkins looked on at the Medal of Honor exhibit, viewing the medal he'll soon receive and the place where his picture and story will soon be displayed. Try to do better and try to do the job that I'm assigned. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV. The National Save a Life Tour visited Fort Benning to spread its message of alcohol awareness and the dangers of distracted driving. Katie Cook reports. For the past 12 years, SALT has been showcasing the realities and dangers of drinking and driving. SALT's goal is to deter people away from making bad choices and possibly life-altering decisions. If we can affect one person, then we're doing good because that one person's going to have more influence on the people they see every day instead of somebody that comes once you know every six months to come talk to them. The drunk driving simulator gives soldiers a hand-on experience to see if they have what it takes to drive while impaired. The interactive machine is like a real car, but its steering wheel, gas and brake pedals are controlled by a computer. The computer regulates the amount of alcohol the car intakes. DUI level increasing. The car is drunk while the driver is sober. Even though I'm not drunk, but the vehicle is, it makes you feel like it. With the vehicle being the drunk, the high of just trying to keep it straight makes you think you're drunk. It's a mind game. It's a good experience. With motor vehicle accidents on the rise due to texting and driving, the SALT texting simulator proved how easy it is to get in an accident while you're distracted. 
a graphic video showing the realities of individuals whose lives have been affected by drinking and driving added to Salt's message. Distracted driving affects people's lives, and it doesn't have to. When they come back home, there's a great need for, for their safety because they risk their lives every single day out on the battlefield. There's no sense for them to come back home and risk it where they live for doing something that can be totally prevented. Salt encourages soldiers to make plans if they go out drinking. Whether it be having a designated driver or taking a cab home, drinking and driving is not the answer. Katie Cook, Fort Benning TV. Instructors assigned to Armor School may soon have to undergo an assessment before they're placed. I took a look at the pilot for the Instructor Leader Assessment Program. A pilot program on Fort Benning assessed instructor candidates selected to teach at courses within Armor School to determine which school or course would be the right fit for them. Push that, mm -hmm. and that's going to allow you to slide it. Now push it straight off. It's valuable to know the quality and abilities of the soldiers that arrive here to Fort Benning and what they're best suited to do so they're in positions that professionally develop them as a soldier and have the greatest impact on the students here at Fort Benning. Instructor candidates were put to the test as they were assessed during events like a 2.5 mile run, push-ups, sit-ups, rope climbs, and orienteering through main post, small arms proficiency, and a combined arms maneuver tactical exercise without troops. It's going to be taught as if you're teaching it to your mother. Uh, some of it is attributes, some of it is aptitude. Um, we're looking at their expert knowledge, their technical skills, the level of expertise and experience, as well as a demonstrated aptitude to serve as an instructor, their ability to mentor, coach, teach, and how they relate with their peers, superiors, or subordinates. From the technical proficiency of Master Gunner School to the art of reconnaissance, no one knows better what it takes to be successful at these courses than the instructors already holding these positions, which is why they're the ones assessing candidates and will have a vote to determine where they're placed. Well, one, can they articulate and speak to a classroom environment? How do they handle talking and dealing with students in a stressful environment? Um, and do they have the physical endurance to portray to the students that you know, physical fitness is important? Because that's, that's also vital to the students as well. This program not only affects the success of instructors today, but the impact they make on the soldiers of tomorrow. With each instructor impacting a countless amount of soldiers who will go on to shape the future force. Quality of training and more importantly education on Fort Benning is paramount because if you put the combined uh, Armor Basic Officer Leaders Course and Infantry Basic Officer Leaders Course together in one room, somewhere in that room you have a future Chief of Staff of the Army, you have a future Division Commander, you have a future Armor School or Infantry School Commandant and this is setting the foundation for that future. After the assessment, candidates will continue on in the instructor certification process at one of Armor School's many courses. Yeah. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV. From the welcoming of a new Commandant to a unit deactivation, here is a quick Fort Benning Roundup to fill you in on some of the other many events taking place on post. The Maneuver Center of Excellence greeted its new Armor Commandant in a welcoming ceremony in Derby Auditorium. Brigadier General Scott McKean assumes his role as Commandant and Chief of Armor, where he will be responsible for the training, leadership development, education and personnel management of all armor and cavalry soldiers. Major General Scott Miller introduced the new Commandant to those in attendance. Scott, you and Kim, uh, welcome aboard. Glad to have you. And uh, I'd just say the soldiers, not just in the armor community, but the soldiers in the Maneuver Center, are real lucky to have you here. Brigadier General McKean has served six overseas tours in South Korea, Iraq, and Jordan but is honored to come stateside and grant his leadership to Fort Benning. Here at the Maneuver Center, this is the foundation. This is where soldiers are forged into having the ability to fight our nation's wars. And so we look forward to the opportunity of joining General Miller and, and taking care of that, uh, that honor that we have to influence the future of our Army. Elsewhere, the 19th Medical Detachment Optometry of the 14th Combat Support Hospital said goodbye in an inactivation ceremony at Freedom Hall. The unit originated on Fort Benning in 2008 with the mission of providing comprehensive optometry care and optical fabrication support to joint forces in operation as well as providing capabilities on an area support basis. In October 2009, the 19th Medical Detachment deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom 
where they executed several optometry support jump missions to outlying forward operating bases. They returned to Fort Benning in August 2010, where they remained supporting the community of tenant units, trainees, and family members. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. Coming up next, new heavy weapon accessories. From the 240 saw to the Ma Deuce, Fort Benning's Maneuver Battle Lab is testing the latest in accessories that could find its way onto the battlefield and improve target acquisition and engagement. Two machine gun accessories were tested at the Maneuver Battle Lab for their capabilities in dampening the system's recoil effect on mounted optics and thereby extending optic life. With this enhanced capability, officials examined the benefits of such recoil mitigation and its ability to enhance target acquisition and engagements. And first up was the Cadex recoil rail on the M249 and M240 saw, shooting up to 800 meters with tripod and bipod mounts. Each iteration from 4 to 800 meters was a timed event to see if the Cadex improved transitioning between targets. We also collected the hit-miss data from the tower. Recoil rail is basically a Picatinny rail with a buffer system in the bottom. Um, it has two springs that allows it to travel uh, half inch forward or rear and to reduce the overall impact to the hard base of the electro-optic. Just over six inches long and weighing in at less than half a pound, this modified Picatinny rail fits an array of optic devices. When you put your electro-optics on it, whether it be a red dot sight, thermal imaging sight, or a night vision device, while that's on the weapon system, this will help alleviate and reduce by approximately one-third of the recoil from the weapon system into the actual uh, sight or optic itself, and thus giving it a longer life cycle. Soldiers then moved to Ruth Range, where the 50 cals and Mark 19s offered further testing for the solo mount. Also known as the berm and in use with the Marines since 2011. This device uses a hydraulic buffer between the base and optic and can absorb up to 88% of peak recoil force. We shot tripod mounted uh, from 400 to 800 meters and bipod from 1 to 400 meters. With uh, the buffering system, it enables them to put their face up there, see a good field of view, and engage targets accurately. Data collected from this experiment will be analyzed to determine if soldiers were better able to transition between targets, giving them increased lethality on the battlefield. Shooting left, shooting left. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV. One of Fort Benning's vital missions is providing the Army with trained snipers. I begin a new series exploring the U.S. Army Sniper School with a close look at week one. What does it take to turn a soldier into a sniper? This fresh batch of students is about to find out as they begin week one at U.S. Army Sniper School on Fort Benning. Every soldier understands how to camouflage. They understand the purpose of camouflage and what it's for. We just take it to the next level. Everybody understands how to fire a weapon. We teach them how to do it better and farther and with a specific purpose, mission-oriented purpose. The course starts out by laying down some basic fieldcraft skills, concealment, identifying targets, and acquiring firing solutions. These are fundamentals that are addressed before marksmanship is ever applied. These ghillie suits are designed for a soldier to attach natural vegetation from his tactical environment to break up his outline and successfully conceal himself. Instructors individually inspect each student's suit to assess their functionality and effectiveness. Not yet, sir, and I couldn't find any last night. All right, trying, you have any more netting? I don't have any. I'm going to try to find it tonight. I'll right. cut some off of my veil. To be successful as a sniper, no matter what they're doing, whether it's looking for target indicators, shooting, stalking, anything that the sniper does hinges on their, their level of awareness. It's not long before they head out to Camp Rogers for a target detection exercise. Here, they line up in the prone with their scopes and are evaluated on their ability to find the targets within the field of view. To the untrained eye, the field may be empty of any targets, but there are certain indicators these future snipers must learn to detect. 
What's keying them in on those objects is their color, their hard lines, we call them. Um, nothing in nature really grows in a straight line. So when we see straight, perfect lines, it's an indicator that that is man-made. The week continues with range estimation. In this exercise, a target of known size is held at variable distances and students must record their estimates, the first of which are based strictly on an unassisted visual assessment. We evaluate their ability to range estimate with their eyes because there are moments on the battlefield where you don't have time to measure the target and work through your formulas to put a bullet precisely where you need it to go. Then, students use their scopes, which have markings etched into the reticle that serve as units of measurement. In conjunction with objects of known size, it becomes possible to determine the range to target. Once we have that range to the target, we can use a ballistic solution to apply the appropriate elevation that will allow the bullet to hit that target. The two sides of the coin in sniper school are fieldcraft and marksmanship. Once students are trained on the foundational fieldcraft skills, they are able to look forward to trigger time as the U.S. Army Sniper School rolls forward into week two. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. After the break, a newly renovated clinic for the Army Dental Corps. But first, Fort Benning's picture this. Fort Benning Schools welcomed back a familiar face. Katie Cook visited with Wilson Elementary's new principal to hear her thoughts on the new school year. Wilson Elementary started off the school year with a new principal in charge. Michelle Allen hails from Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. She's no stranger to Wilson Elementary, starting her career here and later becoming the assistant principal. The motto at Wilson Elementary is, I can and I will do my very best. And that's my charge to the public, to the community, that I can and I will do my very best to do this job to the best of my ability and to serve their kids and their families. The Department of Defense Education Agency has developed a new initiative following the strategy of creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. These four C's set students up for success. Wilson Elementary teachers meet every morning with their peers within the school. This year, the school board changed the start of the instructional day so elementary school teachers across Fort Benning could have a 45-minute uninterrupted collaboration to fulfill the four C's. One of the things that they do during collaboration is they look at what we want our students to know, what should they be able to do, where are they currently, and what can we do differently for those who are not meeting the standards. This gives teachers an opportunity during collaboration to look at student work and determine which students need interventions. Another way Wilson Elementary is implementing the four C's is with the We Do Lego program. Lower grade students use Legos to learn fundamental elements before they move up to the robotics program. Today they got help from their partners in education. Our Pi partners come all the time and they help support them, they help with programming, they help them make decisions, they ask them, well what about the extra pieces or how can we make this better? Those are great questions um, involved in the engineering process where you ask, you imagine, you plan, you make improvements. That's life. That's how we do it every single day. 
Ms. Allen believes that these opportunities will enhance capabilities and provide them with more critical thinking and decision making. And growing up as a military child, Ms. Allen understands the challenges these children may face. It's a great life, it's a unique life, but we have to have a deeper level of compassion in order to make the best education opportunities possible for our kids. Katie Cook, Fort Benning TV. Fort Benning's largest dental facility received a much needed overhaul. Let's take a look inside the new Love Dental Clinic and find out why it sets a new standard. The Love Dental Clinic is now open and seeing patients. It has undergone a complete remodeling and after 14 months of work, the doors have reopened to what is now a state-of-the-art facility. Originally built in 1979, it was never designed to support computer technology or much of the modern advances in dentistry since then. But that's all been changed and the Love Dental Clinic is now among the elite dental clinics in the Army and in better position than ever to support the dental health of our active duty soldiers. We provide a full array of dental services and so you know we provide all the general dentistry and the comprehensive dentistry dental needs but we also are the specialty clinic for Fort Benning. So even though we have four other dental clinics on Fort Benning, if they have referral cases they're probably going to come here into this second floor which is the home of our specialty clinic and home of our residency training. The residency program is a major asset of the clinic. They can accept up to eight residents right out of the top dental schools in the country and through direct commissions help build the Army's dental corps. We've been hosting the residency uh, here for about 50, over 50 years, but finally we really have a state-of-the-art facility to do it again. The residency program shares the second floor with the specialty clinic. Home to four dental specialties, the Love Dental Clinic offers comprehensive care all under one roof. With a patient base of around 6,000 soldiers, the 70-member staff expects to stay busy, but Colonel Perrine says they remain dedicated to speedy service. We have something called Go First Class, which really expedites that. This is a new program we have where soldiers are able to come in, not only get a dental exam, but get a dental cleaning in one appointment, and possibly if they have just a minor amount of restorative work that needs to be done, that can be done all in one appointment also. The Love Dental Clinic is a 64-chair facility and one of only three dental clinics in the Army designed to these specifications. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. Coming up next, kayakers hit the hooch. Georgia's extreme summer heat had residents flocking to the waterways for some sweet relief. Katie Cook takes a trip down the Chattahoochee, MWR style. From advanced to beginners, about 20 individuals gathered to partake in this Labor Day weekend's Kayak the Hooch. The kayaks were unloaded and placed in the water. Life jackets strapped on and off the adventurous kayakers went, paddling down the river. In the beginning, all we did was we had people get used to their kayaks, uh, paddle around a little bit, get everything set up in their boat, and then we just headed down the river. Participants were dropped off at Pet Cemetery on Fort Benning and paddled seven miles to Uchi Creek. Everything's very well laid out and there's always somebody nearby. We always saw somebody either ahead of us or behind us if we needed help. But yeah. It's very, this is great. very well done. This is it's great. great. Yeah. For a small fee, MWR can offer you a day full of fun and adventure. We give them the chance to go out and kayak for a cheap price with lunch. Also, sometimes the way that you kayak, you know, you go down the river. And so in order for people not to have to turn around and drive back, we have a ride for them. Whether it was spending time with family and friends, admiring wildlife, or just having the opportunity to kick back and relax, fun was had by all and many memories were made. I think we're just having fun because we're kind of relaxing and just talking. Yeah, it wasn't like you had to be rushed to be somewhere. <laughs> just finding the little little alcoves here and there and spotting a couple birds and a possible gator. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like, I'm telling you, it was a gator. So yeah, it was, it was great. It's definitely do again. When everyone was done, the kayaks and participants were loaded up and headed back to outdoor recreation. Kayak the Hooch happens twice a year on holiday weekends. For more information, contact the MWR Outdoor Recreation Center on post. Katie Cook, Fort Benning TV. Well, that looks like it was a lot of fun. Yes, and it does look more fun when you stay in your boat. <laughs> As I recall, you did swim those rapids. 
That'll bring this edition of the Benning Report to an end. But you can watch these stories and others on youtube.com slash TV or at benning.army.mil. And you can also like us on Facebook. From the Public Affairs Office, thanks for watching.